champions of Spain. 35 and counting. Los Blancos celebrating yet another league title at home in front of their fans. A memorable, memorable day for everyone inside the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu, Real Madrid champions of Spain the 2021-2022 season as we said worthy worthy winners of this competition they've already won the spanish super cup and there is the small matter of the champions league as well but guillem this league title this is the one that managers want to win because it shows that you have been the best team throughout the season no doubt and i understand the relationship of real madrid with the champions league and really how big clubs now are measured a lot of them by their results in in, in europe but really, uh, this cop, this title, this win, this, the way they've done it as well, suggests that they've done a lot of very good things, not just in 7, 10, 12, 13 games, but throughout a season. And as you said, with four games to, uh, to go, means that uh, they can now focus their attention in, in the Champions League. But uh, this is, a, as you said, a very small um, group of 14, 15, 16 players that Ancelotti used. Quite clearly, he had an idea what he wanted to do with them. Changed, because these guys that are racing the Cobb now decided that uh, the best way to actually uh, get to grips with this league, they are the best goal scorers. That's giving them that uh, point difference, 17 at the moment. Uh, the record is, uh, I think it's 15 with Tito Villanova when he was at Barcelona against the Real Madrid of Jose Mourinho. Could mean that, yes, they will be the biggest difference uh, to the second in the history of La Liga. Uh, you don't need to understand Spanish to understand what was written across the stadium. Campeones, champions. Real Madrid are champions of La Liga, as we said. 35 titles, that is an extraordinary figure. And they, they look well-placed to add to it. Obviously, we had Barcelona dominating La Liga for, a, for about a decade or so, but this is the second title in three years for, for Real Madrid, and they'll be looking to try and build on. Yes, you do need to renovate this squad a little bit there are some old players coming to the end of their uh, careers but still performing highly but Real Madrid look well placed to, to start a, a potentially really impressive era to be frank what Florentino Perez has tried to do for the last few years is to start that transition into a team that is younger but then of course Modric is going to renew his contract, <laughs> isn't he? And, uh, and Kroos has renewed his contract, and Casemiro will stay on. You have to play them. Minos mean, challenged those, uh, those three masters of the, uh, of the midfield. Up front, Benzema is 34, and yes, they need another striker. They've been trying to get Haaland. Uh, it looks like he pay, may, may go to a City, but in any case, Mbappé is one that obviously they, they hopefully to get. But uh, he hasn't... They haven't been needed. No Haaland, no, uh, no Mbappé. I insist, um, Barcelona are going through their own transition. Atletico Madrid, having won the league, they didn't know how to win it again or challenge for it anyway. And is it the beginning of an era? It's certainly, as you say, two, uh, two wins out of the last three. And you look at it, they could even be called favourites for next season. Well, both Atletico Madrid and Barcelona find their own, uh, their own solutions to their own troubles. But uh, you, you laugh now at uh, some of the moments of crisis. Mm -hmm. There were defeats against Getafe, against Espanyol, against Sheriff, the first game in the Champions League. And uh, people started to say, well, it could be like uh, Chalotti doesn't get the right balance between these youngsters and the veterans. He's using the same players, a lot, long list of things that uh, he was accused of. But the key moment of the season, I feel, uh, was the, uh, the defeat against PSG in the first leg. That came on the back of a draw against Elche. Defeat against Athletic Club in the Cup in the last 16. And Villarreal's nil-nil draw. Then he came that defeat against PSG. And yet again, talk about the future of Ancelotti, who had signed a three-year deal uh, and started to uh, suggest that perhaps he will not be there next season. Was uh, met by Carlo with total calmness. And he did the same things that he'd been doing along the season. Every team goes through a, a, a moment of poor form. This was as long as he went, because of course we know what happened in the second leg against PSG. Started getting a run of wins and they've been uncatchable. 
Uh, if you look at some of the results that Real Madrid have had this season, they've been able to grind out tough wins in matches where they haven't necessarily played well. You remember at the, uh, the Bernabeu in November, they beat Sevilla by two goals to one in a game that Sevilla took the lead in, played really well in for an hour, but Benzema scored uh, late on. They had two games against Athletic Club in La Liga. They won one, one nil uh, at the Bernabeu and the other in Bilbao, two one. Both games where they didn't necessarily play particularly well, but they ground out the win and picked up uh, all three points. There was a 1-0 win at home uh, to Granada in February where they didn't play particularly well and Asensio scored with 15 minutes to go. Rayo Vallecano away at the end of February. They scored a goal uh, with seven minutes to go. Karim Benzema, 1-0 it finished. There have been, Guillem, uh, victories like that, lots of victories like the one against Sevilla a couple of weeks ago when they were 2-0 down and ended up winning 3-2. Uh, They've had... We've seen epic moments in the, uh, in the Champions League and, as you say, moments where... They didn't play that well, they still got the results. That, for me, is one of the five keys of this Real Madrid. The other one, you sense it there. They're all with the manager. Mm. Apart from Gareth Bale, who's not there, surprisingly enough, and perhaps disappointingly enough, but everybody else is with the manager. Uh, physically, remember last season, they struggled with injuries, and they, he seemed to have stopped that, uh, that rot and that difficulty. Uh, with, with that, that mixture of uh, young and veterans that uh, Ancelotti has, has used, Cleverly. Uh, today, for instance, we didn't un understand why Modric had to play, but of course, he's giving him these minutes because he feels he can, as he has done today, deliver for an hour and then just rest him. The likes of Benzema came on later. And, uh, and finally, uh, he's used a 4 3 3 as a, as a basic system, but to be honest, He's given the responsibility of the decisions to the, to the players. He talks about not giving instructions to the midfielders, uh, not telling players what to do. And that is actually the case. It's, mm. it's like a, an open menu, it's like a la carte. You know, you go into the, pit, into the pitch, Real Madrid players knowing it's up to us because there won't be exact instructions of what we have to do, but that works for them. Uh, on the left of your picture there, you can see Plaza de Cibeles in the heart of the Spanish capital, in the heart of Madrid. Uh, if you're a Real Madrid fan, uh, you probably know what that means. If you're not, you might not know that Plaza Cibeles is where Real Madrid fans and players go to celebrate whenever they win a trophy. There is going to be a big, big celebration there. You can see lots of fans have already gathered and they kind of knew they were going to win the title today. They only needed a point against Espanyol. In the end, uh, they wrapped it up in style with a 4-0 with a victory. If you're just joining us here on La Liga Live, these are live images from the Santiago Bernabeu and Plaza Cibeles as Real Madrid are champions of Spain for the 35th time. They did it in style with that 4-0 win over Espanyol. The Bernabeu is an absolute party and the party is going to continue for a while. Maybe not too late, for some of the players, there is a big game coming up on Wednesday. But, Guillaume, they, they have to enjoy it because this is what it's all about. You work so hard, week in, week out, and you win the title. You've got to enjoy yourself a little bit, knowing that there is a big game to come on Wednesday. What day is it today? Is it Saturday? Well, it's Saturday. There's yes, lots of time. Yes, they can go out. They do normally have the Thursdays as their day out, isn't it, if there is no midweek game, because, yes, they have to release their adrenaline and tension and and this is what it is about at the moment they are very aware that uh, that obviously they have to be prepared for what's coming and in midweek next wednesday there's going to be a lot of running and a lot of focusing to uh, to take place but now it's a time to uh, to celebrate that the hard work that has been put in all season and Everybody works really hard. It's not just Real Madrid, every single team in the division. But, of course, the fact that they got so many things right and that the managers led so well. A manager that, you have to say, was the fifth choice for Florentino Pérez. He didn't expect to be the manager of Real Madrid this season. Once he done, it became clear that he was leaving. He was uh, at Everton, perhaps not happy, but certainly thinking that that was his uh, near future. All the possibilities were discounted for different reasons, Allegri, Pochettino, and, uh, and eventually they, they went on uh, with Ancelotti. And Ancelotti, that in his first time at Real Madrid, did not win the league, but won the, uh, the Champions League that had eluded Jose Mourinho. But in his second season, the team kind of collapsed physically, didn't seem to be at the level of others. And that was an accusation that, was, uh, that continued through the years on, on Ancelotti, and the fear was on those moments that we mentioned earlier when they started to lose some games, not getting the victories against Elche Villarreal, that this was going to happen again. Ancelotti took to his guns, uh, held by, by Son Davide, 
and uh, realised that no, the team is fine. We still got four or five players that help from the bench. They've done so. The the Valverdes, the Camavingas, they actually have um, have held the team. Lucas Vázquez and so on. Uh, Rodrigo even who has started scoring at the important part of, of the season two at the end. All those have helped. There is a clear 11 that will be the one played in midweek. But meanwhile, that uh, 17, 16, 17 players have taken Real Madrid to win the league again. Uh, live images from the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu of the celebrations as Real Madrid are crowned champions for a 35th time. In the uh, left-hand corner of your screen, live images from Mestalla. Uh, the Valencia derby about to kick off. It's Valencia against Levante. A big game for Levante as they uh, try to move off the bottom of the table. They saw Alaves win earlier this uh, uh, today and they uh, certainly need to get something from the, uh, from the derby. Uh, we'll give you the team news from Mr. Uh, in just a sec. We have to now keep moving on. This is the best thing possible. And the party is for them. You hadn't won the league title here for many years in front of your home fans. How does that feel as well? It's the best feeling for a player of Real Madrid to win the league title in front of your home fans. This is the best club in the world, and it just brings us joy. How can you stop these celebrations tonight, considering you have another big game in midweek? Today we have to celebrate, but we, are, we know we're fully aware we have a massive game in midweek coming, and we're prepared for that as well. So we're ready. It's a big joy to celebrate it with Benzema as well. So Marcelo speaking there uh, at full time after winning uh, the league title once again with Real Madrid. His sixth league title, his 24th trophy as a Real Madrid player. No Real Madrid players have won more uh, trophies uh, than Marcelo. Who's leaving the club uh, in the summer? His contracts uh, come to an end. He has been an extraordinary servant uh, for uh, Los Blancos. Yeah, one of the best left backs in in the history of the game. There's no doubt about that. Um, uh, he's you know he learned from uh, from Roberto Carlos and uh, and and he's, he's left himself at the same kind of level. Uh, it's clear, it has been clear for a while that Real Madrid were not willing to uh, to renew his contract. His uh, his time at the at the club, perhaps even at the elite, is over. But, uh, but in any case, today he tried, didn't need to score that goal that would allow him to leave with, uh, with another uh, good mark in his, in his CV. But, but yes, he has been not just, not, as he was saying, not, not just somebody that uh, demands a lot of his own teammates, but somebody that's uh, added alegría, happiness to the, to the changing room. He sees football in a different way to Northern Europeans or to, uh, you know, to, to all the nationalities where, where they see more and look more for the sacrifices and the hard work. He can do all that, but uh, he, he thinks that uh, life is to be enjoyed. I think that that does help in a, in a changing room like, uh, like Real Madrid, one full of different nationalities and, uh, and with different people thinking different ways. And he is, he's, uh, his happiness is infectious. Now it's time to move on and he won't be the only one that moves on. I think Isco won't renew his contract either. Sevilla, Betis, two teams that are after him. Ceballos, who had a very good game and, uh, and when he has been given the opportunities, he's proven to be a really good servant of Real Madrid, but I think he wants to leave. Let's see all those players that are on loan. But, uh, but quite clearly, the, the hardcore of, of the team will be, will be present. Uh, and some of them will have to take a step, a step forward. We already mentioned Camavinga, of course, and uh, Marcos Asensio, who... It's, again, one of those players that at some point, especially at the beginning of the season when the results were coming good, remember that by December, by December, Real Madrid, this is the beginning of December, Real Madrid were eight points away from Sevilla, ten points away from Atletico Madrid, and 16 points away from Barcelona. And that was down to, to those players that were playing and those coming from the bench, and certainly Asensio as well. But in the second half of the season, things didn't happen for uh, We're witnessing here the most important moment of the afternoon. <laughs> Nacho is... Uh... Well, bullfighting with his kids and the Ole is ringing around uh, the uh, Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, other players have done that uh, in the past. This time it's, uh, it's Nacho's turn uh, to do it. <laughs> it's, uh, his kids, I think, uh, bumped into each other, so uh, uh, time, to, uh, time to go off uh, uh, there. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, uh, the players who have to maybe take a step up next season. Well, Marco Asensio, uh, 
He scored 10, 10 goals this season, Marco Asensio, in La Liga. It's his best ever goal scoring uh, return for, uh, for Real Madrid in, in a season. So let's see if he gets more minutes. We, we saw a glimpse of him there, Edin Hazard. Real Madrid have done this without their 100 million euro forward, who's barely featured at all this, uh, this season. Obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a joyous occasion, so we don't want to necessarily dwell on the negatives, but yeah, they, they've done it without needing Edin Hazard. What, what time did, did the game finish? What was that? Uh, <laughs> half an hour ago, whatever it is. Yeah. And we haven't even mentioned us. Yeah. It's an extraordinary situation. And, and yes, perhaps one is to dwell more in a, in a, different, in a different place, but, but you have to say that it must not be easy for him not to have been counted at all, even though he was fit. At the end of the season, he has been fit, but he just hasn't been important to Real Madrid. And that happened from very, very early on in the season. Very early on, um, Hazard realised that, uh, that even though injuries were, were, were setbacks for him and he couldn't really, um, couldn't really just make his input into the, into the team, when he did, he wasn't important and he couldn't affect games. So for somebody that's cost 100 million, that uh, has been trying for a while to come to Real Madrid, with his own difficulty to accepting of this, um, that's learning, by the way, with the Ukrainian flag, uh, another memory that the, um, the world of football is not just a bubble, that outside there is a, a real world in which, in which real things happen. But in the case of Hazard, I think there is, um, he has to go through uh, not, o not only a physical reinvigoration but a mental one as well and the plan he he keeps saying to everyone that asks him is to do it at Real Madrid but how he converts what is it now two seasons three seasons of highly good enough football into a, a relevant game at a time where perhaps Mbappé joins Real Madrid where they will be looking for another striker where Vinicius and Rodrigo seem to be miles ahead from him where Marcos Asensio will want to make an impact you already said he has had his best season still feels like it. there's more more to come from him even though he's now 25 isn't he but there's all those that he's got in front of him he's hardly played at the end of the season um, and let me say Courtois best player best goalkeeper in the world Best goalkeeper in the world, uh, we certainly think so. We've seen him week in, week out perform absolute miracles for, for Real Madrid and he's a goalkeeper that wins matches for his side. Uh, you mentioned uh, Edin Hazard and earlier on this season, Carlo Ancelotti was asked about Edin Hazard and he said Hazard's problem is that at the moment he's got a player that the manager prefers playing in his position and that was uh, Vinicius Junior and we've seen that uh, Carlo Ancelotti vindicated in sticking with Vinicius Junior and picking but, him but over Hazard. I think the, the problem goes much, much deeper. Obviously Ancelotti cannot speak about that. It's something to do with, um, with his mind and, and how he deals with whatever has been happening to him. So he needs to ring Re recover basically the idea of, uh, of loving the game. Absolutely. Well, these have been live images from the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu. We had to stay there and just bring you some of the party as Real Madrid have been crowned champions of La Liga for a 35th time. I uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, watching some of these uh, images, some of the uh, celebrations. We're going to leave you now.